Yo, Elliot, how can I be more? How can I remain present and focused in the now, specifically in conversations, in the actions in life? Thanks, bro. So it's, that's, a, that's a good question. It's one that philosophers have mulled over for ages. And there are lots of complex ideas surrounding presence, right? We even have Eckhart Tolle, who made a whole living off of his book called The Power of Now, right? Someone brought up The Power of Now recently. And so you know that there, and that's a best-selling book. So that means there's a lot of questions around. There's a lot of desire around how do I remain present, particularly now in conversations, according to Toby. And so I think the best way to approach this is to once again remind everyone, including myself, that uh, even as I was describing earlier today, you know, as we were starting the call, there is a masculine essence in the world. Right. And there's a feminine essence in the world. The building blocks of all material existence is found in the interplay between this negative and positive or yang and yin. Right. Uh, we see it in the digital world. Right. The pow what powers this digital technology that I speak to you with, speak to you through a series of zeros and ones. Right. That's why they call it digits. Digits means there's more than one. There's two D I die two right digit so there's always this in, in, in multiple in many different patterns there's always this contrast there's always this interplay you could even look at it in terms of the, the extremes of the seasons we have extreme summer and i live in florida right and the summer is extreme extremely yang right that heat but then that heat gains its power through the dormancy of the winter Right. You need the winter. So we're he heading into winter right now and all the trees. I planted a ton of fruit trees. They're all going to go into hibernation. Right. They're all going. They're all going to cease to grow. And what happens is the energy recedes in. Right. And in that in that in that introverted place, there's growth. Right. Think about a woman who's giving birth. There's something going on beyond the site, right? Until she starts to, exp you know, the belly starts to grow. But there's something happening inside. There's an inner reality and there's an outer reality. The inner reality is female, feminine. Think of, once again, with women, where is her power? Her power is inside. Her power, is in, her power to grow is on the inside. The masculine is extroverted. It's power to grow is projected outside the body. So if we're gonna stay along the lines of, of, of sex, right? The woman receives something inside her that is nourished, that is grown, that brings forth life. The man, on the other hand, let, lets something out. He releases something. He, uh, in an extroverted way, he ejaculates. He gives to the world. He gives to the woman. So that is the po that is the positive that is the adding to what was negative there's nothing in the womb until somebody adds it now what does this all mean in terms of being present right particularly in conversations it means that we get an opportunity to exercise in our activity in our in our in our thought world in our behavior in our character both masculine and feminine right and i don't want anybody I, there's a lot of controversy around this particularly in the manosphere right where, you know, if anybody refers to the work of Carl Jung and the fact that he refers to the anima and the anima, so there's an inner male and there's an inner female, you know, with each person. Every woman has a little bit of masculine in her and every man has a little bit of feminine in him. And so that there's a dance there. I've even explained it biologically sometimes uh, as it relates to each one of us having a masculine and feminine. The heart is feminine. The heart receives, right? The heart, when something happens out there, what happens? <gasps> The heart receives it and you jump. The mind is masculine because what does the mind do? It projects, it thinks into the future, it plans, right? So we got a masculine capacity, we have a feminine capacity. In conversation, speaking is masculine. Asserting yourself is masculine. It's extroverted, you're throwing words out and words are creative as well, right? You can create life with your words, you can create death with your words, you can create order with your words you can create chaos with your words but either way it's what you're throwing out into the world and that makes it what 
masculine. It's very important for us also to cultivate our ability to receive. This is incredibly important for the fully actualized man. For the man becoming fully himself, he must have both an extroverted nature but also an introverted nature. And the introverted nature, the receptive nature in man, in conversation, is his ability to hear, to listen, to sense, to pay attention, to absorb what's going on around him. This is interesting because in order for us to really act in the world, we must first receive. What do I mean? So, for example, you're in a coffee shop and somebody busts through the coffee shop door with a big old shotgun or something and he's pumping that shit and he's ready to blow everybody's head off. He wants some money. He wants something. He's a bad guy, right? Most people in that situation, what they, what they receive first is a shock, boom, and oftentimes freeze. But there's one guy in there who, let's say he's an ex-Navy SEAL, right? Like my buddy Rich Graham that lives 20 miles uh, or 20 minutes north of me, and I go and train with him. He's an ex-Navy SEAL. That Navy SEAL, rather than freaking out, what does he do? He starts looking around. He pays attention. He's looking to see if there's anybody else. He's trying to figure out the character of this guy. Is he freaking out on drugs? What is he on? Then he starts looking around. Where's there a place to hide? Where can I go first? Who do I have to, who do I have to worry about? He's strategizing. But he's strategizing on such a higher degree than everybody else. Because what? Because he's receptive. He's paying attention. He's listening. He's looking. His head's on a swivel. When in conversation, when dealing with other people, when wanting to truly be in a position of power, it has been said that he who listens most, he who listens and asks questions most, is in the position of power because he's receptive. There's, there's no power in action if it doesn't proceed from a place of of stillness. I've spoken to you guys about this before, the difference between activity and action. Let's go back to the coffee shop. The people who uh, freak out, they're going to take action. I'm, I'm sorry, they're going to be steeped in activity. Excuse me. Activity means ungrounded movement, means this is not coming from a place of stillness. It's usually coming from a place of fear. Right? It's coming from a place of fear. The Navy SEAL, on the other hand, he's coming from a place of receptiveness, stillness. He's coming from stillness. So he's going to act from a more calm, grounded, deliberate, resourceful place. In your conversations, listen more. In your conversations, ask questions because when you ask questions, you're giving that person more opportunity to be extroverted, to give you what they want, what give you what they want to give you, or to clarify what they're sharing. So remaining focused or remaining present doesn't have to be this mystical Eckhart Tolle thing. It really doesn't, right? I mean, we can go there, but we really don't. In the most simple manifestation of being present with the now is listening, listening. Even when we're by ourselves in nature or we're uh, wanting to commune with our creator, there needs to be a listening, over-talking, talking too much, talking too fast, um, throwing out a bunch of vomit is, yes, it's extroverted, it's masculine, but it's coming from a fearful masculine place. It's not coming from a sovereign masculine place. It's coming from a uh, cowardly place, right? Fear. Or, you know, it's, all, it's also coming from a tyrannical place, a, a desire or a need to control, a lot of times when we speak too much in our conversations, it's because we need to control and the need for control always comes out of fear. So the truly balanced sovereign man knows how to shut his mouth, knows how to listen, knows how to observe, knows how to read between the lines. You see what I'm saying? And so if you're wanting to experience a little bit more of that in your life, my brother, it is as simple as closing the one mouth and letting the two ears do their work. I'll give you just a little like a little trick, <laughs> something that I've learned personally because I tend to be an overtalker. I tend to be one of these guys like I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not denigrating, I'm pointing it out. 
just want to spit, right? I'm very extroverted. I'm very energetic. I'm very masculine in that way, but it can become imbalanced. So one of the things that I've learned to do, and I've taught it to some of my children who are a lot this way, and I've even mentioned this to you guys, is, and this is going to uh, improve your ability to be present in a conversation with someone. It's also going to, like I say, the person who listens and asks questions controls the conversation. So it's going to put the it's going to put the power in your seat. It's going to put it power in your hands. So the the the, the advice is this: when someone's speaking and they're giving their opinion or they're asking a question or they're sharing with you, before hopping right into your response, before hopping right into your answer, before jumping all over whatever they just put down, pause. Pause. There's a power in pausing. Did you know that? There's a power in pausing. You know, I speak to a camera, in essence, when I'm doing these Q&As, and it's been this way for over a decade. I speak to these cameras. So I'm not really having a conversation with anyone. I'm in flow. I'm just flowing. I'm just spitting to a camera, literally. There's no real conversation. I don't see you. You see me, at least in these written questions. And as a result, uh, well, not necessarily as a result, but one of the things that has, uh, that has in the past been noticed about me when I'm speaking and that brings power to my conversation is a bit of charisma is that every once in a while I'll pause. I don't do it so much anymore, but, I'll, but, but there are times and people take notice that I'm talking, I'm giving an answer, and then I'll just stop. And I'll look off. I'll just pause. That's a receptive place to be. That's a that's an open space. That is a womb, right? Think about a womb, a woman's womb. What is a womb? It's an open space. But what's in that space? Potential. Potential. All true potential comes from stillness, comes from space. So look at it that way. Maybe it's just a paradigm shift. Look at it that way. If you're really wanting to be, you're really wanting to be, uh, present and you're wanting to be powerful pause pause for your powerful presence and let me know how that works for you dude hope that helps man done yo it's your bro elliot i hope you enjoyed that video if you did you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent king transformation classes with my students where among other things we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business and with women that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.